Okay, guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about uh, heart rate training in mixed modal fitness. So, for example, CrossFit or any style of circuit training where you're doing different elements of fitness or different elements of exercise at, at various intensities throughout one block of work. Um, so there's a lot of interest being gathered by heart rate training. Um, across the last number of years, which is fantastic. Um, and I just want to give a, a pretty pretty brief example, if I can today, of how we can use heart rate training for um, aerobic training so, or how we can use it for mixed modality training, um, what most people would know as circuits or CrossFit, um, things that include different modalities of exercise. So, for example, you may have um, squats, you might have some cyclical work like rowing, uh, you might have some push-ups, um, and you might have an element of everything uh, in there. So some aerobic work, some gymnastics, some weightlifting or powerlifting um, exercise, and maybe some body weight um, exercise in there as well. So what I've got here in front of me on, on your screen is uh, an endurance-based run. So you can see an hour, an hour long uh, snapshot of my heart rate on a run. Okay, um, pretty high, I would say, um, but all the same, it's um, pretty level. Okay, so you can see here there was a couple of hills in this run, and then at the very end there was some stride work, um, so slightly faster running, um, with some walking periods as well. So you can discount maybe the last ten minutes or so of this. Um, but you can look at the first hour and you can see it's a fairly, fairly even um, picture. Now, if you were to look at a, a decent runner or um, a more high level endurance athlete, uh, what you would see here is is an even steadier heart rate. Um, potentially, you would see it a little bit lower, but you'd see a very, very steady um, heart rate there. You wouldn't see too much lumpiness at all. Uh, so that is your that's your steady state aerobic, which is what most people would would uh, measure their heart rate in, which makes the most sense. And I'll just explain why the area underneath the graph here, underneath this heart rate graph, is is pretty consistent. So you can compare a ten minute period in your hour long run today with a ten minute period in your hour long run next week, for example. Um, all things remaining equal, of course, and we know they don't always. So the, the route may change, the elevation may change, um, the pace may change, how you feel may change, how you slept the night before, all these things, all those factors can change. But for the most part, they're comparable um, and they're, they're, they're pretty um, accurate when you look at them as, as snapshots in time. So you can look at, for example, the 10 minutes today or the hour today versus the hour next week. You can look at the 10 minutes at the start of the run versus the 10 minutes at the end. The main reason being is the activity is cyclical in nature. So when you're running, one foot goes in front of the other and, and it's it's cyclical. There's no major change. You may change cadence. You may go a little bit faster. You may open up your stride a little bit more, but it's still cyclical in nature and the heart rate responds the exact same. So your heart responds the exact same. So before we go to look at mixed modal uh, fitness, and, and heart rate training. Let's go a little bit on the basic physiology of, of hearts and, and how it operates. So your heart is a muscle um, and like any muscle, it can, uh, it can grow and it can get stronger. And the heart is, is pretty unique in, in how it adapts to exercise, but also it does adapt like any other muscle. So if your training is predominantly strength-based training, what you do get is a hypertrophy or a muscle build in the heart, which isn't a bad thing. It's, it might sound like it's a little bit of a, an iffy thing to have, but hypertrophy of the, the heart is, is, is perfectly normal because if you're growing muscle elsewhere in your body, your heart responds the same and it grows and there's a slight thickening of, of the muscle in the heart. Um, so your heart will adapt to the exercise that you choose. Now, if you're an endurance athlete, and particularly this would happen in, in, endu in elite endurance athletes, the, the heart will actually expand. It doesn't hypertrophy. It doesn't get, the, the, the muscle doesn't exactly get thicker, uh, but the heart itself expands and gets longer 
in the in the chest cavity in the heart cavity and it it allows a bit more space so that you can pump more volume basically so you get more um output more more blood flow um going through the body which makes you more efficient delivering more oxygen to the working muscles um so they're the two very basic adaptations in the heart you can have a hypertrophic effect where the muscle gets thicker uh, or you can have uh, more of a i suppose a cardiorespiratory response where you're doing more aerobic work and your heart will adapt by expanding to fill more space in the cavity so it'll get slightly larger but it doesn't mean that the muscle wall gets thicker so they're the two adaptations now we got to think about that now when we spoke about the mixed modality of fitness so for example you could be doing a strength exercise and you could be doing an aerobic exercise none of these things happen in in a in a really short space of time so your muscle in your heart doesn't get really thick really fast just because you've done five squats um, nor does your muscle elong or your heart elongate because you went out for a half an hour run uh, it, these things take time and they, they adapt over a longer span of time but it gives you an idea that the heart is not something that's just sitting there and just beating away it, it responds to the stimulus that you give it so now when we look at a mixed modal workout so this workout um, if we look at it and if I can push this up on the screen here quick look at it it was five rounds five floor presses and they were done at a moderate to heavy weight uh five to ten ring dips uh 15 calories on an echo bike and then 20 supinated banded pull aparts um the floor press was, was quite heavy and that was that was a strength based exercise uh ring dips were gymnastics based and was body body weight but still uh, if you think about a, a ring dip, it was very much um, isolation based. So you're you're pushing your body weight mostly using your triceps and your chest. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't a big compound movement. Um, calories in the echo bike. Anyone who's ever used an echo bike or an assault bike knows that it can typically induce a real spike in the heart rate. Um, so I don't know would you even call that an aerobic exercise, but it's diff definitely different to your floor press and ring dips. And then your supinated band pull aparts, the whole point of those was to relax again and bring the heart rate back down before we go into that heavy floor press. Um, so that was the workout and the way it was put together. Okay, so none of this was done at a fast pace, but it was still done in, in a fairly compact amount of time, 15 minutes. Um, so you get an idea of there's totally different modalities here and totally different um, things that the heart has to do. So this is a snapshot of that workout. Um, you can possibly discount the first uh, 40, 50 minutes of this. And, and we'll just look here at, at from around where my pointer is now um, for the workout itself. So you can see uh, floor presses, uh, not a huge amount of, of, of heart rate output. Uh, ring dips, not a huge amount of heart rate output. And then you get that, that big output for the echo bike. And then you got a drop again. And a spike and so what you can see is it's very very lumpy when we compare it to what was happening in the run which is a very very smooth and steady curve uh, we have a very lumpy and spiky uh, heart rate track here so what's that telling us well I guess we can still measure the area under the curve and under this line to look at how much work was done in general okay so if I look across that hour I can compare the amount of cardiac output that went through uh, in this hour by measuring this red area and I can compare it to the measurement of the area underneath this as well okay for the run however how it's different is if I do this workout today and uh, let's just look at the workout itself in that 15 minutes of a workout I cannot compare my heart rate output for five floor presses than I can for 15 calories on the echo bike so it's very, very difficult to, to measure heart rate uh, exercise to exercise because your heart responds differently. Um, you can measure overall output across, let's say, an hour of work, um, and, and, and you can give it a general idea of how much work you've done, but you can't compare five floor presses to 15 calories on an echo bike to 20 burpees to, to five squats. They're, they're all different exercises. They all involve different contractions. Um, and, and by and large, your heart is going to respond totally differently to each of those as well. So 
I guess to to summarize what 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 we're saying here is cardiac output and and heart rate monitoring is is a valuable tool when you look at overall work rate when you look at your your effort and intensity um so if you're trying to gauge how much recovery you need but uh comparing workout to workout when we talk about mixed modality fitness is it's a losing game uh you can't compare today's uh 12 minute amrap for example to tomorrow's uh strength based workout um in terms of i worked harder today than i did on on monday for example um it just doesn't work that way you're you're comparing apples and oranges you're not comparing apples and apples so if you're running you're comparing apples and apples if you're comparing the same workout uh let's say you're doing like a benchmark workout let's say i was to do that floor press exercise and that five rounds of a workout this week and i were to do it next week i can't really compare the exercises within that workout uh, but I can compare the overall output this week to next week. Um, so I hope that gives you a sense of, of what, what we do with heart rate monitoring. You'd have to look at each workout in isolation um, and then compare it to the same workout done again. Uh, you can't compare, let's say, if you're doing uh, different exercises on Monday than what you'd be doing on a Wednesday. They're, they're just not comparing like with like. So not throwing... Uh, heart rate monitoring out entirely it's a it's a hugely beneficial tool particularly when we look at overall work rate when we look at overall intensity um and when we look at at, at recovery from that exercise intensity um over over the recovery period after you've done the exercise but um comparing workout to workout and and i suppose looking for points and red zones and things like that sometimes that can be uh wildly inaccurate um because you're comparing uh an hour of burpees with uh, an hour of back squats and they're two totally different things um so i hope that makes sense to you guys if anyone has any questions i would absolutely love some feedback on this video um it's something that i've been looking at for a for a good while now and and it's kind of irritated me when i see certain things and it's like uh comparing a monday workout to a wednesday workout for heart rate or intensity when we don't really understand what we're trying to achieve in that workout and in that hour for example um they're not like for like so let's stop comparing those things yes we can compare benchmark workouts with benchmark workouts you can compare aerobic pieces with aerobic pieces um but exercises differ your heart rate differs and how your heart pumps for each exercise differs as well um so okay if you've got any feedback i'd love to hear it um i'm looking forward to getting some feedback on this one thanks guys